Daniel Dancer was born in Pinna in 1716, in what was then a rural county of Middlesex in southeast England. Daniel Dancer's claim to fame is that he is quite possibly the most miserly and miserable person that ever lived and lacked all trace of natural affection. He inherited this dreadful trait not just from his equally miserly father, but also his grandfather, and because of their miserly behaviour, had unsurprisingly managed to accumulate wealth. As Daniel was the eldest of the four children, and when their father died in 1736, he inherited the family estate at Harrow Will Common on Harrow on the Hill in the London Borough of Harrow. His sister, unsurprisingly, shared Daniel's stingy traits and lived with Daniel Dancer as a housekeeper while they appeared to live in seclusion and strict frugality. Daniel Dancer and his sister lived for no other reason than to save money. They had no thoughts or principles or rules of life, and every action of their life was devoted to saving. Too stingy to hire a gardener, their last trade of land was allowed to lie fallow. They even endeavoured to lengthen the period between their meals, and they never ate unless they felt extremely hungry. In other words, they ate to merely survive and not for enjoyment. Dancer would eat only one meal a day, which consisted of a small portion of baked meat and a hard-boiled dumpling. On one occasion, he found a dead sheep in a field, and even though it was starting to decompose, he nevertheless took it home and prepared mutton pies, which they feasted on for many weeks and never varied their diet until most of the pies had been consumed, and what remained of the pies he locked in a chest, much to the chagrin of his sister. On one occasion, a neighbour by the name of Lady Tempest, a Yorkshire baroness, sent him a gift of trout cooked in claret. The weather at the time was extremely cold, and when his meal arrived at the house, it was frozen solid. Because the dancer was too stingy to heed his generous gift, he waited until it had thawed enough for him to eat it. In hot weather, when the meat started to smell and was in the process of decomposing, Dancer would say that on such occasions it would prove more economical as it would eat less of the meat but none would be wasted and it lasted longer. How this man did not die of food poisoning is baffling in itself. Dancer rarely washed his face and hands as soap was too expensive, towels would eventually wear out and would cost money to clean. In the summer, he would go to a nearby pond and wash himself and afterwards lie on the bank to dry his skin and bask in the sun. Although extremely wealthy, Dancer never had his clothes made by a tailor, but instead was his own tailor and would cut his own garments and would also patch and repair them himself. His outer garment was made of pieces of various colours and fragments of every texture that he'd found on the streets or from various heaps of old clothing that he'd found. On very rare occasions, he would buy one shirt annually, which he never washed or mended, and wore it until it was in rags. His lower garments were kept together by a strong hay band that was tied around his waist, and his stockings had been darned so often that it was difficult to find any trace of the original stocking. In 1766, when his sister was dying, he refused to get medical advice and assistance, claiming that it would cost him money saying, why should I waste my money in trying to oppose the will of God? If the girl has come to a latter end, nothing can save her, and all I may do will only tend to make me lose my money, and she may as well die now as at any other time. If I thought bleeding would recover her, I would open a vein myself, but I cannot think of paying for help for dying people. Danza's sister had £2,000, which she intended to leave Lady Tempest for caring for her as she was dying. But his sister died before she could make a will, and the property was left without a will being signed. The two other brothers wished to divide it with Mr. Dancer, but he refused this proposal and refused to comply with any amicable arrangement, and a lawsuit followed. Daniel Dancer was able to recover £1,040 of his sister's fortune, stating that the regular price of a board and lodging for 30 years at £30 per annum and £100 for the last two years was a very reasonable request. Then the remainder of her estate, after the deductions, was equally divided between the two brothers and Mr. Dancer. After his sister's death, he used a fraction of the money to buy a second-hand pair of black stockings to mourn in. He never spent any money on shoe leather, but would pick up the occasional odd shoe that he would find on his walks, and would spend winter evenings mending and patching them, as he was also his own cobbler. 
You would think that their wealth would show a luxurious mansion, but their property matched their appearance, and anyone passing would believe they lived in poverty and squalor, and was generally an eyesore to all passers-by. The windows were just pieces of board, with paper and dirty rags, and tiles falling off the roof. Its overall appearance was so patched and badly repaired that little could be made of the original building. The only times a dancer had dealings with other people was when he was selling his hay, but was otherwise seldom seen by his neighbours. However, he was occasionally spotted gathering logs of wood from the nearby field or finding old iron or sheep's dung around or under the hedges. If Mr. Dancer entered a church, he always departed before the collection plate was brought around, as he hated to part with his money. Housebreakers once broke into his property and rummaged around hoping to locate his concealed wealth without any luck, as Daniel Dancer had concealed the treasure when no one would have ever thought of looking for it. Strangely though, Daniel Dancer had a dog, of which he was extremely fond, which he called Bob. Even though he denied himself a decent meal, he allowed his dog a pint of milk daily, as well as other treats, which was totally inconsistent with his stingy values. In 1794, Daniel Dancer eventually died, and the house was nothing but a decayed building. However, it took many weeks to explore its contents. 2,500 pounds was found, contained in manure in an old jacket, carefully tied in the cowhouse. They also found banknotes and gold worth 500 pounds. Several bowls were discovered filled with guineas and half guineas. They also found various parcels of banknotes. Some were crammed in the crevices in the wall. Bundles were hidden under the cushions and covers of the chairs. Some were found at the back of the drawers. And notes amounting to 600 pounds were found neatly doubled up inside an old teapot. In the stable, they found jugs full of old dollars and shillings. In the chimney, and in 19 different holes filled with soot, they found various sums of money, amounting to £200. 